streamers. It's been a second because I'm a lazy YouTuber. But we have a cute setup today. Let's live our best life here today. We're making all our dreams come true. Why don't you come along with me? Because I love spending time with you, with you, with you. Spending time with you. Today, I'm actually going to talk about my spiritual journey that I have been saying that I would get to talking about. And this video is triggered by my reading The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. I showed you guys that in my vlog that I did in the last video. And the eye-openingness of it is driving me insane in a good way. I also had read The Four Agreements last year or a couple years ago and that was really nice. It offered me peace and peaceful thinking. Um, the Untethered Soul in tandem with Inside Out and the conversations that I've been having with my therapist are sending my brain in a completely crazy space. So, growing up, I've always been a free thinker, critical thinker. I've always been an ask a question type of person. I always wanted to know why. I always want to know how things are created. I also always want to know why do I have to do something? Why do I have to listen? Why do I have to follow the rules? Why do I have to follow anyone? why can't i just do what i want at all times so that's been the question that i've been asking authority figures my whole life my mom often just like leave me alone with all your questions and so i've always been curious george and i had a lot of time alone as a child i was only a child for six years and then from like when my brother was born when i was six to 15, 16, I just spent a lot of time by myself thinking thoughts. I had imaginary friends much longer than most children do. I played like imagination games in my room or when I was by myself. I would talk to myself an insane amount in public. <laughs> like it didn't matter. I just, I've always been connected to that voice inside of my head. And then when I started making friends, I kind of like got socialized a little more. So I wasn't that weird for the most part. Cause I still talk to people that are like, what are you talking about? We don't understand you. Maybe even watching my videos, it might be like, what are you talking about? I don't understand you. So I tried to explain myself as much as I could. I am one of those people that really want to be understood. And I over explain, I over talk. That's just, just me at this point. So, always curious George, did a lot of reading, a lot of talking to myself. A lot of soul searching like why am I like this why do I see the world that I do even watching shows yes it was for entertainment but I used watching shows as a study of how people communicate in relationships what is acceptable in friendships and romantic relationships and family relationships like I would really like study the storyline and the characters and the acting and the human behavior and the psychology of everything that was always very interesting to me because I didn't have a whole lot of interaction with people my age outside of like being in a classroom which we're limited to a certain amount of time we're able to talk to each other and a certain amount of topics we're able to talk to each other about. So the conversations I wanted to have as a kid, I never really got to have because I didn't have the time and space to talk to my friends. 
or the people that I would try to talk to wanted to talk about something else completely. So that's been the struggle for most of my life. I'm still struggling with that today, having like-minded people talk about the things that I want to talk about with the same enthusiasm that I want to talk about them with. <laughs> and I've been finding those people and connected more with the people that have been in my life that feel that way, and that's been really nice. But for all of those talking to myself and wondering, my dad was the first introduction I had to meditation and affirmations and like that side of spirituality. So my dad is like an avid affirmations listener. And at first, I was never put off by it, but at first I was very curious. I was like, what are you listening to? It's very calming, very relaxing. I just am very interested in why. <laughs> why are you listening to this? And he basically started explaining how the universe works. He's a big law of attractions person. And I studied physics, so most of the laws made sense to me. And I'm a very science-based person, so I need things to make sense. If it doesn't make sense, I just don't get it and I can't, I can't get into it. That's why I have some blockages with religion because some of the things just don't make sense to me and it's hard to get myself to believe it and follow it um i'm working on that for me um but he started like getting me into like meditation and affirmations and i always liked journaling but after he really got me into that and talking about writing down your goals and writing down positive thoughts i really got into my journaling so I also started listening to my own affirmations. I started writing my own affirmations, recording my own affirmations, meditating. And I remember at school, one of our teachers tried to get us to meditate, but the way he went about it bothered other students and other teachers and like religious issues and stuff. So we never got to really do that in school, but I've always been like very intrigued. So when I started meditating on my own, I followed the teachings of Deepak Chopra. I think he and Oprah had this like program they used to run with like 30 day meditations and I used to be up on that meditating with them and I really really fell in love. So after I graduated high school I had a whole year to just figure out my life and that was the most peaceful happy most myself most in tune most healthy year I ever had and at 16 years old i started having a theme for the year or a word of the year that i wanted to manifest and that every time i did it i got some version of the word so when i was 16 i just started with sweet 16. 17 was savage 17 and for me that meant standing up for myself and like focusing on my goals and accomplishing my goals and for me that was school related and friend related and 18 was elevation 18 and i got elevated i really started meditating and like during that year i got time to myself in a completely different way because i was no longer going to school i had no priorities no worries when my mom would go to work and my brother would go to school, I would have the entire house to myself. And so I was able to maintain a routine. And I used to wake up during the blue hour. I used to meditate um, when they were done getting ready and, and left for the house. I would do my journaling, yoga, I would work out, I would make myself breakfast. I was completely vegan at the time and i lived in a very beautiful spot so i would get to wake up to the ocean and the mountains and i meditated and i yoga and i hugged trees and i walked barefoot in the grass and i didn't have any responsibilities i was tutoring at that time so that was the only thing that i had to focus on but i was teaching kids stuff that i know like the back of my hand and they were really sweet kids so that was like a dopamine session for me every day but i was just the most peaceful I went to the beach a lot i remember one of those days i went to the beach with my grandma in the morning and i cherished that memory um 
we've always like butted heads me and my grandma but that day we had complete peace and she took me to the beach like I asked her to early in the morning we swam I floated floating is like a magical experience for me in the water so I cherish that memory but during that time I was just very meditational very spiritual very focused on my goals and I kind of mapped out what kind of life I wanted and my very specific goals i cannot find my little booklet that i wrote everything on i hope i never i didn't leave it in trinidad i have been looking for it for four years or five years um but it's in my mind so i could try to re-piece it together if i never find it in, in a box or something but i've always been connected to like higher self and source and one of the days that i meditated I felt the peace and the high and the nothingness of sitting in your seat of consciousness. Like it was so peaceful. And I probably have had that feeling three times in my life. But the first time it happened, like when you're meditating and you get to that place of stillness where your body isn't moving, your thoughts completely stop. And you are aware of everything that you're feeling without thinking about it. Like it's like ecstasy or like peace or whatever. So I think that's what is being described in the Untethered Soul. I haven't finished it. So I'll probably do like a review of the book itself. But so far I've been learning about the voice in your head. And you not being the voice in your head. And being the person that hears the voice and sees everything that you see. Like your eyes are cameras. And... I often flow between that thought and then like the inner family systems, like the different parts of yourself, the different voices in my head. I'm very self-aware on like a cellular, solar level of, I'm very aware of my existence, of my body and things that happen in my body, of my thoughts and what happens in my brain. and. Inside Out, I only figured about this year, the movie, that explains like how your brain works and how your emotion works. And that movie just put everything into context for me. And uh, I just, I feel like I had like an epiphany in me. Like my life just changed from all of that. And I am getting closer to that peace. And peace is not something you can chase, but I feel like I'm walking closer to that peace of being completely comfortable in my existence and looking at life as an experience and not a job or a task or something that has to be fought and struggled through and i do a lot of people watching i've always i always have and it's very interesting to do people watching in a completely different country with a completely different culture and different people that look differently than you like I have a lot of moments where I can tell what vibration a person is on and has been for their whole life because of what they've went through or what I assume they have went through or have not went through. In my case of like being a black person in the world, being a Caribbean person in the world, not be growing up wealthy. Um, challenges shape your worldview and not just your worldview, but like your spiritual view, your mental view. It just like, it affects everything. And actively working on it, actively working on healing, actively working on understanding my existence um, is a huge endeavor for me. Because when I put it into context and I put it into like under examination, it's like, Life is so vast and nothing matters, but I'm here having this experience of so everything matters. And I've always been very emotional. I've always been very intuitive. And I am a dreamer, as we've established <laughs> on all of my platforms. We've established that I dream. 
and because I have real dreams, it's very different experience for me. Um, so I have different kinds of dreams, and I don't think I've ever talked about the where the name dreamer comes from and why I identify with such intensity. I remember when I was 15 years old, like even my memories are so freaking vivid for almost all of my memories, this is crazy. But I remember I was 15 years old and I was walking on in my yard, but it's not like a flat yard, I lived on a hill. So it was like the curved part of my yard. I was literally walking up and down and around my yard. And I had an iPod touch and I had gotten Instagram always been obsessed with Instagram since like the early early days I had gotten Instagram and I wanted a name that I would not change I wanted a name that felt so me and that no one else had and that reflected what I wanted to manifest for my life and had like a very catchy ring that people will remember and I remember and I was like thinking about all these different things and then Terry for the dreamer just like flashed to me and I was like that's perfect because I'm a dreamer like I'm a dreamer in the sense of I be having dreams I'm a dreamer in the sense of I have this big imagination that I can achieve anything and that's what you call a dreamer a person that believes in the impossible and so that was funny and I stuck with it and the word dream the vibration of the word dreams resonates with my soul um, that and the color purple go together for me. Um, so that started. But my dreams are like, sometimes they are completely random, lucid dreams where ra the most random things happen with people I don't know. And sometimes it's third person, sometimes it's first person, sometimes it's second person those are just random dreams i just it's like watching a movie for me or playing in the role of a movie because sometimes i dream first person pov from someone else's perspective like it feels like someone handed me a script and i am playing this role fully aware that i am tarifa and i have nothing to do with this person's identity but i feel all this person's feelings and I am in their body and I am having their experience and I am aware of this the entire time of the dream and it's not to say that I can always control everything that happens sometimes I can control the actions and sometimes things just happen and I'm there in that person's body in that person's POV and I don't think I've ever tried to wake up but I, I'm not sure if I have difficulty waking up during those kinds of dreams. But it's weird. Because I know it's not me and I know it's not my life. I know it's not my experience. But I feel everything that person's feeling. Kind of like watching a movie or reading a book. Um, or playing a role if you're, you've ever been in a play or acted. Um, that's one type of dream I have. Another type I drew, of dream I have is where I'm me. And people that i know in real life from my past and from my present are playing their roles that they currently play in my life or they're substituted for other people um and things happen in that dream events happen words are said i can touch and feel them and most of the times when i have those dreams of real people that are in my life it's a manifestation of something i'm feeling inside or an intuitive psych like psychic warning or premonition of something that comes to happen and when these events from my dreams happen in real life it freaks me out it feels like deja vu it feels like i'm going crazy like sometimes i get dizzy and i have to sit down i have to drink some water and it's like those dreams are like they creep me out so bad Another kind of dream I have is just a straight up message. A straight up message of a warning of, sometimes warnings are just, 
this is going to happen not necessarily being a bad thing and maybe the, i don't know, know what a warning means if i'm honest like now i'm like when you hear the word warning there's a negative connotation to it but it's just a preamble a heads up a description of like this is going to happen or this is being hidden from me like if someone has a secret i just be knowing because i dreamed about it it's very weird um another type of dream i have some reoccurring dreams that i had since i was a kid and i'm still having them they're not always exactly the same sometimes they have different settings but the feeling of the dream is the same dream um and i honestly feel like those are my suppressed emotions <laughs> my repressed feelings um things i have to work out my traumas that I haven't released yet and in the book they talk about opening up your heart and letting go of your blockages and i feel like i need to do that with those dreams and those emotions and those are the ones i can remember from the top of my head the most common dreams that i have but recently i had the weirdest dream this dream was I'm going to call it a dream because it happened when I was sleeping in a dreamlike state. But it was very different and very weird because what it was, it was a recollection of a time period of my life with genuine memories. And I use the word genuine memories because I can recall things, but I don't remember every single detail i remember the details that i was consciously aware of in that moment so right now i'm aware of the camera in front of me i'm aware of the mic i'm aware of the room that i'm in the settings but i may not remember that there was a bag on the floor i may not remember that the lights all wipes well now that i'm paying attention i will but if i was just looking at the camera making the video those are the things that i would have remembered in these in this dream i remembered every single detail i remember the temperature of the air i remember what i was wearing i can recall what i was wearing for the most part if i paid attention to my outfit um or a picture was taken or stuff like that but i remember every single detail from each of the days i remembered the rooms that i went in for the different subjects that i, I took at that time i remember my feelings and the weird part about it specifically was usually when I remember stuff, it's like I just go back to that moment and I feel everything I felt. But this time when I felt everything I felt, I felt it as a 24 year old looking at the memories. So everything I felt, I was able to analyze and judge it. And it was like, OK, I remember feeling insecure. I remember feeling I wouldn't call it shame but just like the need to protect myself and now i can identify why i felt those things in the moment i could have too but now it's like coming from a healed place of like i don't feel that way anymore and no one can make me feel that way anymore about those specific things that made me insecure back then and it was just weird it was like literally looking at my younger self have an experience and be like oh sweetie well, you won't feel like this anymore eventually but that was so weird of having those vivid memories played back to me and looking at them from this seat that i'm in consciously of being where i am now in life after having those experiences and it wasn't necessarily a traumatic time there are connections to traumatic events, but that specific time was not traumatic for me. So I'm not sure why it held such a powerful space and came up at this time. Um, but it really just rocked me and rocked my perspective and it made me just want to think about it and talk about it some more. My goal in this life is to have peace, complete inner peace complete transcendence i don't care about material things they make life fun they make life enjoyable they make life easy 
but oftentimes I find myself just being at peace of like if I died right this second all I'm concerned about is going to heaven all I'm concerned about is going back to source all I'm concerned about is being right with God and like I like nice things I really 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 do I really do but I don't put my value into things and I'm realizing that more and more and more as I get older and as I try to acquire things um, especially with the whole like law of attraction business if I get my mind in the right place and I just do right by God and I do right by everyone in my life life is supposed to be fun and joyful and peaceful and I should have all my needs taken care of and not want for nothing and every time that I have lived in that driver's seat and I have done the healthy things and I have put my highest and best forward my life was amazing I've always gotten everything that I've asked for and if I sit and I analyze my life yes I've had struggles yes I've had traumas yes I've had times where I didn't know if we could make it forward if I could make it forward but everything I've ever asked for I have and the things that haven't come to me yet I see the obstacles that are preventing me from getting them being my own actions in my own like within my power to change and to correct it's like I can't afford those things on an energetic spiritual level so I won't have them right now because I'm not doing my part <laughs> in getting them but it's like it's pretty nice even like the book the secret i watched that when i was younger because my dad and i just want to get back to that place because i feel like lately i've been living with lack a lack mindset and a fair mindset and i really want to get out of that I haven't been meditating as much. I've been journaling like a motherfucker though. But I haven't been meditating. And I want to get back to that level of peace on my spiritual journey. So that's where I'm at. There are a few things I found has worked for me. So I know like, okay, this is good. This is bad. Even though we're not supposed to be judging things, it's good or bad. But it's like, this is positive, high vibrational. This is negative, low vibrational. And then flow between the two as you do in life. Um, but I'm trying to figure it out. Sometimes my head starts hurting, like right now. My head starts hurting by how much I think about it. <laughs> like the existence. I've been having a quarter life existential crisis since I was like 15, 16. That elevation 18 year, though, was like my peak. And I often talk about it. And I often. Have nostalgia for it but i want that state and that flow and that peace to extend over my life and so i need to get back to a place of like having all of my needs met having hope having joy being super connected with nature being super connected to myself in a positive way not a judgmental way um, i've been analyzing a lot too and I've been going to therapy and my therapy sessions have been funny um I've been my own therapist for a long time I feel like I'm pretty versed in psychology I never went to school for psychology but I wanted to be a psychologist when I was younger I worked in a mental hospital for a little while when we had our apprenticeship apprenticeship program but I'm one of those patients that <laughs> Um, I know everything that's wrong with me. I come in, not with my own diagnosis, but a very clear idea of why I'm having whatever issue I'm having. Of my emotions, of my thoughts, of which what's triggering me, how I feel about it, what my struggles are. And so we really don't have to figure that out. <laughs> um, we talk about... just getting forward and I do have struggles with like boundaries and yeah mainly my boundaries are what have caused my issues currently um, 
but it's just been it's, it's been a life and i'm not where i thought i would be where i expected to be i've made a lot of alternate decisions and i've been learning to deal with the sways and the hills and the valleys and there are a lot of things i never thought i would do both good and bad um but it's still just part of life it's part of the human experience and what i want from this book is or like the tools to fully transcend fully just get to a place of peace and like non-judgment non-judgment with myself and with other people and i've been practicing like when i feel the emotions and i feel the thoughts i just release because i don't want to harbor blocked energy inside of me and i feel like with the loneliness and the wanting friends and the wanting a boo and like wanting a family and stuff like that i don't know what i actually want like i thought i did i think i do but it comes with a lot of like real life things and real life responsibilities and compromise and just evolution. Life is not as linear or as predictable um, as I would want it to be or as I understood it to be. I don't, my biggest struggle is staying in one reality because i don't know which reality is real like some matrix shit i don't know which reality is real and because i dream so much and i'm often going to different dimensions and different realities and different perceptions sometimes even different identities it's a lot for me to navigate and to be grounded with Sometimes I wake up and I don't know where I am or I forget the last five years of my life and that I moved to a different country and then I moved to a different house. So like maybe I need to see a, like a psychiatrist or something but at this point it's like I don't know where I am on a planetary level and dimensional level like i don't know where i am i don't identify with anything really i have a hard time connecting i have an easy time connecting i'm the easiest person to connect to but i have a hard time connecting because People don't feel real. Life doesn't feel real. The world events do not feel real. My job sometimes doesn't feel real. Like I very much know what I have to do. It's very much a process that goes from A to Z. You can go up and down, side to side, but it pretty much has to go A to Z. Either it ends or it, like it ends in uh, closing or it doesn't. <laughs> but there's a process. And even at times with that and going through that process, it doesn't feel real. It's hard to describe. And I don't know if anyone else can identify with that feeling of just confusion. Uh, we're all going through like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I don't know if I want kids, if I don't want kids, if I want to get married, if I don't want to get married, if I should get married now, if I should get married later, if I should focus on my career, what should I do for my career? Like, we have all of these questions and, like, there's no right or wrong way to do everything because if you do it one way, it's, like, a better way to do it. Like, you want to have safety and security and independence and freedom and peace, but does it really matter? Does it? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> And I look, I told you, people watch. So I look at people and you never can know what's going on with someone. And don't even try to figure out what's going on with me because I don't know. But there is some indication 
of whether or not that person has some kind of peace with their life or which reality they live in. Um, I am a reality hopper. People call it having rose-colored lenses or being delusional. I just live in different realities. I don't want to. It's like very, it's very trying, trying experience. But it's like, I feel differently every day about life. And if I spend too much time by myself in a, in a room, the outside world ceases to exist in a very unhealthy way. In a very why does anything matter, nothing matters type of way. Like I don't want to do nothing because nothing matters type of way. And then we get really deep into the why am I here? not feeling like i have for some days i feel so purposeful and then some days i'm like oh what is my purpose what is the reason like if i spend a week locked in my room minus my real estate the world isn't going to miss me like i don't make that much of an impact on the world and that's feeling doesn't motivate me to make an impact on the world it's just like it's pointless and I feel like a lot of people do feel like that. And I stop myself from living at times. Because sometimes life is living. Is a, is a sim sometimes living is as simple as just going outside and having an experience. Whether that's going to the grocery store, going for a nature walk, listening to music, going for a drive, interacting with other people. There are days where I don't interact with other people, minus like my mother, father, brother, um, and barely even that. And it's like, I don't feel connected to the world and no one else feels real. And then this one time when I was having one of the deep spiritual talks with my dad, he gave me the conception of the thought or the idea of no one else actually exists. And I'm creating my own reality. I make everyone up in my reality. Like I am exist as being all by myself and life isn't like my consciousness has created this reality for me to experience. And it doesn't exist to anyone else outside of myself. And so I was asking him, well, how are you real? Like, do you? exist in your own reality like are you also sleeping somewhere dreaming this <laughs> and we just are connected so that's a concept that i'm very intrigued by and when i watch like marvel movies that like expands my mind because like like even like ant-man or like the that whole section of it or doctor strange I identify with those movies so hard because I'm like that's how I see the world and I used to think that I would come into superpowers or even like supernatural shows where like they have witches and people with powers and like, like superhero shows and it's like I identify with them I low-key thought when I turned a certain age that I would get powers I'm highly disappointed being 24 no powers um <laughs> highly disappointed because i'm like i've always felt special and i'm like if somebody were to have powers it would be me like i have what it takes i have this the, the pizzazz that you need to have to like do something with your powers and i would think that my powers would be very earthy being a taurus and just being really connected with nature i thought that that would be connected to my power or just like intuition and like psychicness and stuff like that <sighs> i'm going down the rabbit hole and i don't want to take you too far down we will talk about this another time if you identify with anything you resonate with anything that i talked about please 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 comment or please message me because i need people who get what i'm talking about to have these conversations with 
and when I start talking about them, I look crazy. And that's why I don't talk about them, especially in public or to the public because they're going to lock me up and put me in a mental institution where I know I'm not crazy. I'm not like schizophrenic. Like, <laughs> I'm not. And crazy is in your Bible. Like, if you have mental illness, like, that's not something to make fun of or not something to judge or not something to be ashamed about. But I don't think that's the case. I just think that my eye and my intuition is a bit more opened. I'm a little more sensitive and susceptible to the spiritual realm. Um, I think it's in my bloodline. I think I've just always been extra and special in that way. And I want to embrace that. I used to be scared and, and saddened by that when I was younger. But like now I want to flourish in it and I want to explore it. And so I need the space and the community and the connection with people who actually get it and actually feel what I feel and actually relate and actually have similar experiences to help me talk about it. Even like deja vu, like not everyone gets that. And it's so powerful. Like I get deja vu multiple times a week. That's not normal. I have psychic visions and dreams quite often. Half the time I know what's gonna happen. Half the time I say things, they happen. Like two seconds, two minutes after. And I just need to talk to people about this. I've been listening to podcasts. I've been watching movies. I wanna talk about this so bad, so bad. I'm going to get to ASMR now. <laughs> but that is all for today's video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please comment. Even if you think I'm crazy, please comment. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Okay, bye. I'm not on drugs. And I haven't drunk in a really long time. So, no narcotics were taken in the making of this video.